resultant force resultant force to understand the concept of resultant force let us see the upper figure in which f1 and f2 are two forces acting on a block which is placed on a smooth surface f1 f2 are two forces acting on a block which is placed on a smooth surface if the block is at rest then the resultant force will be zero so fr will be zero if the body is at rest or it moves with uniform speed even if it moves with uniform velocity the resultant force fr will be zero if f1 is greater than f2 if we consider the right direction as positive from left to right the direction is considered as positive then f1 will be positive and f2 will be negative so the total force is f1 minus f2 and the resultant force is f1 minus f2 so fr will be equal to the total force f1 minus f2 the total force or the net force gives the acceleration hence fr will be equal to ma and the acceleration will be to the right so this is how we apply the second law fr is the resultant force f1 minus f2 and this fr will be equal to the resultant force will be equal to ma if we consider a block suspended by a string by applying newton's second law we will get if the mass is held at rest then fr is equal to w minus r where r is the reaction is equal to zero that is in the right side figure in the left side figure t minus w will be equal to zero when the block is at rest t minus w is equal to zero and when the block is rest on a horizontal surface then fr is equal to zero which is w minus r like this we apply newton's second law artwood's machine in artwood's machine we consider the upper circle as a pulley massless pulley and it is rigidly fixed and a string massless string and smooth string will be passed over this pulley two masses m1 and m2 will be attached at the ends of this string generally they are of unequal mass then m1 and m2 are the two masses because of these masses the weights m1g and m2g act in the vertically downward direction this is gravitational force gravitational force on m1 is m1g gravitational force on m2 is m2g if m2 is greater than m1 then the resultant force will be in the downward direction on m2 and the resultant force will be in the upward direction on m1 hence an acceleration will be created to the system the two blocks move with a an acceleration which is constant for both the which is same for both the blocks but the acceleration of m2 is downwards and the acceleration of m1 is upwards we can write the equations of motion by considering the tensions in the string over m2g the tension t is in the upward direction it is also in the upward direction on m1g the tension will be less than m2g since m2 moves down the tension t on m1g is greater than m1g the tension on m1 is greater than m1g because it moves in the upward direction now we can write the equations of motion by using newton's second law the resultant force is equal to ma here on m2 the resultant force is m2g minus t hence m2g minus t is equal to m2a this is the free body diagram and the equation of motion of m2 this is equation 1 let us try to write the equation for m1 t over m1 is greater than m1g hence the equation will be t minus m1g is equal to m1a t minus m1g is equal to m1a this is equation 2 by solving these two equations by solving these two equations we will get a is equal to m2 minus m1g m2 minus m1 into g m2 minus m1 into g by m1 plus m2 a is equal to m2 minus m1 into g by m1 plus m2 and t is equal to 2 m1 m2 g by m1 plus m2 we can obtain these two relations by solving the equations 1 and 2 
To understand the equations of motion in Artsworth's machine, I have shown them separately, free body diagram. The figures are known as free body diagrams. The free body diagram of M2 is given first. M2G is, downward, is in the downward direction, T is in the upward direction, acceleration A is in the downward direction. Hence, the equation of motion is M2G minus T is equal to M2A. The free body diagram the free body diagram of M1 is at the middle. M1G is in the downward direction, T is in the upward direction, T will be more than M1G, hence the acceleration will be in the upward direction. So we can write the equation of motion of M1 as T minus M1G is equal to M1A. Like this we have to understand while writing the equations of motion by using free body diagrams.